Okay, in this tutorial, I wanted to focus on how we did our reflections, the, the reflections in the river for our monster fish project that we did for the National Geographic Museum. This was a pretty tricky thing to figure out, it, but it was so important to nail down the reflections because it, the whole thing focused on the rivers and what was beneath them. I was initially going to try to do it in Maya to get our reflections, but it just was taking too long. It was a little bit too slow. So I went back to the drawing board and figured out how to build it in After Effects. I had done some really basic reflections before, but never anything where, where you could get so close to it. And we had some believable water surface. So I wanted to show you guys how I actually did it, the, some of the tricks I came up with to make it happen. And nothing's, nothing's really crazy. All of it's out of the box, so you can really just do it with After Effects as is. No special plugins required. I just want to go through really quick a couple of the shots here. All this stuff, like all of the backgrounds in this entire piece were done in After Effects. The only things that are 3D are some of these fish, the, the little boy and the monster fish, of course, is all done in Maya, but all composited in After Effects. Now, this is our next water scene here. Now, this water is a little bit different. It's quite still. There's very few little breaks on the surface. And it, it looks pretty simple, but it's not. Where it really got tricky is when we had to go under the water. So we go under the water here. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but like right here, you can see that the fish is actually reflecting onto the surface of the water. There's another fish here. Um, but that, that guy's actually right down here, so it's reflecting quite strongly, but he's actually quite faded in the background, um, something I probably would fix in the future, but not worried about it at this time. But this, this I had two environments. I had this whole environment being reflected here, and so you can see that, that everything is sort of mirrored on the surface. Plus, we had these objects, the pier here. The pier was a bit tricky, too, because these are objects that are all closer to the camera, and they're being reflected as well in the water and creating a shadow on the water. They had to extend all the way down into this other set. So that was a bit of a tricky shot. But the next area with reflections is this one here. I got a little bit better at the water by this point. So this water I feel like works pretty nicely. It's it's really nice and subtle. It's got some highlights in it. And you can see like everything's reflected really nicely. The lighting is a lot better. So Compared to the opening shots, I just feel like the water in this is a little bit stronger. It's all cheated, so it's not perfect, but I think with the speed of the shots and the rate at which everything goes goes by, you can see the string in there is reflected, you really don't notice. It was a tricky balance to figure out, but I think ultimately we, we really nailed it in the end. And the nice thing about this technique is that you get all your motion blur, all your depth of field, all that stuff is interactive and happening in the scene with this technique. You're not doing multiple passes of renders or anything like that. It can all happen within one scene if you really want it to. And all of the animation translates over. So I think what I'll do first is I'm going to give you a quick overview of what we're going to do. And for those of you who are much more skilled or advanced at after Effects, you're not going to have to go through the whole thing to see what we're, what's going on and see the tricks that are being employed. Essentially, I start out with a really basic scene, pretty simple, but you know there's a, a number of pieces in there. And then I add a water plane, so essentially a solid that can act as a horizon line to reference to where the water level should be. And then after that, we go into creating a little water layer, like a long solid that I put a mask on, I give it this curved shape, and then we apply some displacement filters. So turbulent displace. I demonstrate using a wave warp for this as well, but it has a little bit more of a synthetic look to it. So you can either use wave warp, turbulent displace, or a couple of turbulent displace filters, and that will give you a nice water effect. So then after that, I go through and we, I place all of these objects throughout the scene, and I use, I use many of them to sort of fill it up and create a depth and this what this will do is this will create a, an essentially a mask that we can use later to create the water the overall water effects you can see that i've done a whole bunch of them here and i continue to add more and more of them to the background till i get all the way to the edge of the distant objects and just i move them around i don't actually worry too much about repetition because then the next step is to actually offset the time of them all and also what I've done here is I've pre-composed it so I can treat it all as one giant object. And then I've taken its blend mode and I've done it to a stencil alpha. 
So I take all those objects and I, I set it to stencil alpha. And then with that technique employed, what I can what it does is it cuts a hole in the scene that has this nice animated edge on it. So I get this watery look and it acts as an alpha channel or a hole that I can then put our the reflective water surface on. So after that, everything except the water layers that I did is pre-composed and I duplicate that and create a, a, create a composition for the reflection and rename it to main set reflection. And within that, I actually flip the whole set upside down. It's not rotated, it's actually flipped. So it's scaled inversely so that it actually points down and that way we get the actual reflection. And then I do a whole bunch of, I create a bunch of masks out of a flat plane so that the reflections don't go above the water and then do a couple of adjustments so that I'm not getting any overlapping of land masses. And so you'll see I kind of go through and tweak some of them, tweak some of the masks until they look good. And essentially that gives me my, my reflection. And then after that, I create a large plane and this is going to act as our water layer as, as the ripples and effects and using the turbulent noise generator and blurring and other things like that, I'm able to create the animated reflective surface of the waters. And then from there, we go in and we create uh, a couple of them to create some complexity on the surface. And then I create another one, which is actually used as a displacement map. And this gets nested in a separate composition because displacement maps don't understand 3D. So it has to be in a nested composition with a duplicated camera. And that will actually create displacement maps that respond to the highlights in the water. So it feels more natural. It feels like it's connected to the water. And then the last, last step is actually creating a blur on that water surface, as well as adding an, a, an additional displacement, which turbulent displace, which gives it the kind of the organic, even more disturbed surface look. And we eventually come to what we have, adding a couple of other things, a couple of other coloring and additional layers we eventually get the nice water look that we have. So that's just a quick overview to give you an idea of where it's all going. And for those of you who are a little more advanced in After Effects, maybe you can see already how it all works and start putting your own thing together. And for those of you that are interested in seeing the whole process and how it all comes together, there is about an hour of tutorials on how to do this. So follow along if you're interested and thanks for watching.